G'day everyone, it's Farmer J and welcome back to Derriere Farms, where we're going to take a, I don't want to say take a step back, but we're going to go back a little bit and we're going to talk about animals. Now don't worry, I'm not going to rehash the animal videos I've already made, which explain how to raise an animal from A to Z. So for take courses, for example, we're not going to be talking about these are the riding requirements, these are the grooming requirements, these are the feed requirements of a horse or a pig or any other animal. But rather, we are going to try and answer the question of which animal gives you the best bang for your buck. Um, I, I, I often get questions regarding my other animal videos saying, great, you know, I now know all about horses and cows or chickens, but where should I start? My farm's established or getting established now and I want to branch out into animals. So what will give me the best bang for my buck and where should I start? For example, I now have enough money to buy a small paddock either for pigs or for sheep or for cows. Um, should I start there? So if you're new to Farming Simulator, or specifically new to Farming Simulator 22 and to animals, um, I hope to answer those questions in this video. If this sounds like the sort of thing you're interested in, please give us a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel because I do put out regular how-to videos or videos explaining the game in detail. All right, so where should we start? Best bang for your buck. By far and away, I will have to say the number one in my book are bees. They have a low startup cost. Yes, the price of their beehive is slightly higher than the price of a small chicken paddock or coop or whatever you want to call it. But there are several advantages to bees. You don't have to feed them. They give you a bonus to certain crops. Had to think there for a second. They give you a 5% bonus to sunflowers, canola, and potatoes. So flowering plower. Flowering, eh. Uh, flowering, I'll try this again. Flowering type plants that need pollination. Which is a definite bonus if you want to improve your crop yields. However, honey by itself is quite valuable. I'm not going to talk so much about cereal, which is the only production that honey is really required for. But we'll talk a little bit about the return on investment for bees. Um, bees are treated as a production so I was able to get access to how much honey this beehive in particular produces. It's worth 19,000, let's call it 20,000 to, to buy. And this beehive produces, well I'm going to round it up, 700 liters of honey per month. So that means in a 12 month period it will make you, this is again based on the price, let me bring up my price menu. A price of, I believe it's 3000 why can't I never find what I'm looking for when I need it? Based on a good sale price for honey, we're going to use 3000 as numbers, assuming you sell it in February when it's at its highest. Uh, February, March. That means if you would sell 28,000 liters of honey, 
subtract the cost of the beehive at 20000 you would make $8,000 in profit in a year. So the beehive's paid for itself in a year. You can put that 8000 to another beehive. And then you're generating 16000 a year. Well, the first beehive's already paid for, so that 28000 is now pure profit. And your second beehive will take less time to really pay for itself if you're looking at the opportunity costs. As I say, bees are fantastic. They require no inputs. They don't have any food requirements. They don't have any green grooming requirements. They are just producers, which is why they rank number one in my book. Now, I'm just going to give you one tip because I didn't do a video about bees but what I do recommend you download is this mod here it's called more honey palette place options by Mr. Hector the problem is with the basic giants see how much smaller it is than this one the basic giants honeybee spawning point it will hold two pallets. After that, it won't do anything else. Unless they're fixed it in a patch that I'm not aware of, um, it'll hold two pallets, and then whatever the, unless you clear those pallets out, whatever the bees are producing is wasted. There is no storage capacity to a beehive. So definitely make sure you download that mod. Now, as far as number two and well, I'm going to, I'm saying, I'm going to say I'm torn between number two and number three, sheep and chickens. I'm going to put them into, oh, a deer. I'm going to put them into a dead heat and call them both number two. And I'll tell you my reasons for that. Um... And we'll start with chickens. Um, chicken pens are slightly cheaper than sheep pens. Uh, and the same with the barns. If you actually want to go for a full-size barn, they won't cost you as much to get started with. Chickens themselves are cheaper than sheep as well. But chickens consume... They consume barley, wheat, and sorghum, which in themselves can be sold for a tidy profit. Um, per thousand liters, you're looking at probably the cheapest one to feed your chickens is barley, which averages uh, let's well, 1100, let's call it a thousand because this was a particularly good year. Um, so you're getting about a thousand dollars per thousand liters. Wheat is a hundred dollars per thousand liters more, and sorghum is quite a bit more expensive. Now, I can hear you say, Well, I'm growing them myself. Um, what does it matter? Well, Your opportunity cost for barley is your cheapest. For anyone that's followed opportunity costs in economics or studied economics in school, it's what would I have made more money doing selling this product or investing in this product versus this other product? Um, so your opportunity cost by feeding them barley is slightly better. Now, eggs are fairly profitable without going into productions. They sell for, uh, I'm going to say again, an average of $4,000 per thousand liters. Which isn't a bad price at all. Um, the other advantage is they breed fairly quickly. Um, 
They're not mer m worth much to sell back once they've reached the mature age. Um, so you're definitely not going to be breeding chickens to sell on the open market um, unless Giants miraculously changes their mind and allows butchery in the game, in which case you could be selling chickens for food uh, at the grocery store. But that's not going to happen. Uh, so now let's talk sheep. Um, sheep have a higher startup cost. I wish my pens were a little bit closer together. Um, sheep are more expensive on a per animal basis to buy. Uh, you know, they're $200 uh, lamb versus $5 for a baby chick. Um, however, they do have certain other advantages to them. And this is why I'm torn between the two. They have low food costs. Uh, they'll eat grass or hay. And I will always, I mean, I'm, I think I'm feeding them hay right now because I had to make, on this farm, I had to make a um, batch of hay for the cows to make TMR. So I shipped the extra hay over to my um, sheep barns. However, I would recommend uh, on a regular basis, just feed them grass. It costs you virtually nothing to make a bale of grass if you've already got baling equipment. A thousand liters of wool is slightly less profitable. It's 3,500 versus 4,000 for the eggs per thousand liters. Um, and when you get into productions, they can really start making you some money um, because wool turned into fabric, which turns into clothes, is very valuable. Um, but we're not going to talk about that because right now you're just looking at bot. If you're just starting with animals, you're probably not doing too much with production chains and you just want to know about wool. Like I said, wool's slightly cheaper, but, or slightly cheaper to sell. You don't make as much profit, I'll rephrase that, as you do eggs. However, sheep produce more wool and I don't know the exact amounts because I don't have access to the animal XML file, which is hidden away. Giants have it locked away so people can't alter it. But my experience has been a hundred sheep will produce quite a bit more wool than 400 chickens will produce eggs. That is. So that makes up for the difference. And like I said, opportunity cost wise, feeding them grass virtually costs you nothing. Um, just the time and the effort to mow and bale it. Chickens on the other hand, you still have to worry about um, no matter which crop you're feeding them. And like I said, barley is your cheapest option. You still have to plant it. You still have to uh, fertilize it. You still have to spray it for weeds or use some sort of weed control and then you have to harvest it now agreed um chickens don't take that much feed so you probably if you've got a decent sized field like one of the ones over here you're probably going to get more than enough to feed your chickens for a year so chicken sheep to me it's a toss-up yes you get more wool you can do more with wool. Um, chickens are a lot cheaper to get started with. You make a little bit more money per thousand liters, but they don't produce the same amount of product as sheep do. So, mm, they're both, it's really, really close as to which I would recommend. So, since 
chickens and sheep are tied for number two. Let's jump to number four. Um, and I'm going to have to go with piggies. And I'll tell you why. Let's head over to the pig pen. Sorry, I should have said the pig barn as I've upgraded all of mine from pens to barns by now. Um, I love pigs. Uh, besides bacon, which, anyway. Um, but pigs, they are, apart from the barn being slow, or the pen being slightly more expensive to buy than sheep, um... We'll take a quick look at this. They grow up really quickly and they only have a gestation period of four months. So that means they breed quicker than pretty much any other animal on the farm. So if you start with... You can start with piglets or you can go with a full-blown animal that's pretty much about ready to breed. Um, even if you start with a full-blown animal that's pretty much ready to breed, when it hits maturity, it's going to double in price. You're going to get about $1,200 um, for a mature pig. Um, pigs are so prolific, in fact, that I started that pen over there with mature pigs. And then I had to transfer some of them over to this pen because they bred so much that this pen got filled and I had to build this barn. One thing I also recommend anyone do with pigs is that they buy, especially when you're starting out, at higher difficulty levels, you have to figure out what's worth it or not. But I recommend you buy pig food. Now, one of the few mods that I recommend to people, and it's not, I don't consider it a cheat. The base game pig food is $900 per thousand liters. Pigs take corn. Uh, a grain product like wheat, a protein like soybeans, um, your opportunity costs for those are fairly high. Uh, as you've seen, wheat is 1,200 per 1,000 liters. Depending on the time of the year you're doing it at, and going back to what I don't consider a cheat is this. It's the multi-fruit buying station. You can find it on Mod Hub. Uh, just type in uh, multi-fruit buying station and it should come up. It gives you, I believe, a 10% discount over buying something directly from the store. So... Instead of having to buy bag after bag after bag of pig food, um, you can drive your trailer directly underneath it, fill it up, get a slight discount, and then drive the trailer up and fill your pig's pen. Like I said, the reason I don't consider the multi-fruit buying station a cheat is because when you buy products in real life in bulk, you get a discount. I really don't think I need to go into any more detail about bulk buying and discounts. Everyone should be familiar with that. All right, now let's move on to the next animal. And while we wander over, I'm just going to mention, I'm going to talk about slurry and manure in a minute. But here we are. Next in the list, number five, I'm going to say dairy cows. There's a bug in the game where dairy cows actually start producing milk before they, they even get to their gestation period. 
um, so a heifer in this game will produce milk. In real life, you have to wait to it have actually gone through the breeding cycle one time, just like a person, uh, in order for it to start lactating and producing milk. In this game, they produce milk at the heifer stage, not at the calf stage. So I would probably recommend buying them as heifers at middle age for $1,100 and you start getting milk production right off the bat. You can, if you want to, go with calves. However, just bear in mind that it's going to take them 18 months to hit puberty. So you're not going to really see any return on investment for just over a year. The other thing with dairy cows, I'm going to give you a quick tip. It's covered in my other video, but don't waste money on mineral feed when making TMR. Mineral feed does absolutely nothing. And don't buy the big barn with the robot feeder. It requires a lot of mineral feed, which is just a complete waste of money. And pro tip number two, as far as dairy cows go, um, you can make TMR. You don't actually even need straw. All you need is silage and hay. Both are essentially dirt cheap products to produce. Um, the only difference is hay, you have to TED, whereas silage, same as grass, you bail grass, then you wrap it and it turns into silage. You can worry about the clamp. I just, I find it easier to make bales. Um, you don't have to worry about a big clamp taking up space. Uh, you can store them along the side of the road, along the side of the fields, like you see farmers do in real life. It's just easier. And then milk actually has a good sale price. It averages, well, let's go back to the average milk here we go so let's well 2300 was the best price i had in the last 12 months even if we dropped it to 2100 or 2000 it's still a fair amount of money now the older a cow gets the more milk it will produce <coughs> and the more you're gonna have to sell just like cows in real life um there is no death in this game, so you don't have to worry about cows passing that breeding age. Um, you can sell older cows if you want to, because they do consume a little bit more food from what I found. But the extra milk production makes up for it. Um, again, I said I wasn't going to talk too much about productions. But besides selling milk for $2,000 a liter to, let's say, the grocery store... Um, it can be trans, not transferred, but, um, transformed into productions at the dairy and the bakery, um, where once you do have money to get into productions, you'll start making even more money. All right. On the topic of cows, um, I just on this farm actually got into beef cows and they are a little bit more expensive to buy than dairy cows. As you can see, they are 300 versus 200 if you're getting babies. They're 1150 versus 1100 if you're getting heifers. And they're fifteen seventy five versus fifteen fifty for full grown cows. However, when they're fully reared and they've hit their maximum age, that fifth well that you can basically make three thousand plus dollars per cow. Um, by selling them for well, for all intents and purposes as much as Giants doesn't want to admit it 
the reason you're raising beef cows is to sell them for beef. So by selling beef cows, um, you're going to make a profit. Notice they avoid using the word bread for beef and profit. The only reason they fall under dairy cows is they take longer to reach that prime age of, uh, to be sold. So it's going to take you longer to see a return on investment. But they're definitely worth the time and the effort if and when you are established and you can afford it. Um, because again, like pigs, they double in price. Another tip is the barn will tell you, or actually it'll even tell you in the menu here. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't. Um, but because they use the same barn as regular cows, the barn will accept TMR, grass, or hay. Beef cows only need to be fed hay. You don't worry about TMR, and with neither of the cows do you ever want to feed them grass because they will never get above 40% production. And beef cows will take a lot longer to become profitable if you feed them grass. So that's a pro tip. Now, as I said, uh, we would talk about manure when we were talking about pigs and we'd talk about slurry. Both beef, dairy, cows produce slurry and manure, as do pigs. Uh, they only produce manure if you have straw for them to put down as bedding. And you also need a manure pit which can be found under silo extensions. Do not use the other manure pit. Use the silo extensions. Between the slurry they produce and the manure that's produced by cows and pigs, um, you can virtually eliminate or at least cut in half your fertilization costs for a big farm. Um, And that really makes your farm more profitable. So that's in addition to the value of the animals and what they produce is what you save in terms of fertilizer costs. All right, having said all that, um, Wilbur, will you please come in the room so we can talk about what I consider to be the most useless animal in the game and your absolute worst inve investment in terms of return on money, and that is horses. Horses take five years to reach maturity. You can only buy them at a young age. They have a long reproduction cycle. Only go into horses if either A, like I do on this farm, and I still haven't gone into horses, you have a surplus of money. Or B, you want them for... How do I put this? I don't want to say fun. Well, yeah, essentially fun or role-playing purposes. You want to be a cowboy and you want to ride around your farm on a horse as opposed to having to take the Mahindra or the John Deere Gator or I guess now we have Kubota or one of those ATVs around the farm. Horses are great for role playing. But for the time and the effort you're going to put into them, like I said, from the grooming to the riding um, to the food, you're looking at a long time before you see a return on investment in horses. So I would put those at the very bottom of my list. All right, having said that, um, I hope you found this video 
useful and I hope it gives you a better understanding of why I have ranked the animals the way I have and gives you a better understanding if you're a new player as to which animals to go with first and why they will give you a better return on investment than certain other animals. In the long run, once you have money, like I said, money to buy what you want, all animals have their own benefits. It's just a matter of prioritizing how you get into animals. So, thank you very much for watching. Take care. And have a great day, Jay.